the skies have cleared in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is a beautiful night. The roof is open. And we're set for baseball. Game two of this three-game series between the Red Legs and the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day, I'm Tom Brenneman. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday night from Miller Park in Milwaukee. You've talked a lot about this season how good a Eugenio Suarez has been. Where he's been exceptionally good is when guys try to spin it up there. Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, hitters will really live on and thrive on hanging breaking balls. But with Eugenio Suarez, I mean, he takes it to a whole new level right here because he's a guy that can go down and get not only the hanging pitch that's around his thighs, but go down and get the one that's down around the bottom of the zone. So, you know, the typical way the right-handed pitchers pitch Suarez and every other right-handed hitter is you come up with a fastball, you go down and away with a breaking ball. Well, Suarez is there to thwart the breaking ball. I mean, after all, he's bad at He's slugging 637 on non-fastballs this year. So I think as the league begins with Jeffs, you're going to see him get more and more heaters up upstairs. By the way, Suarez tonight for the first time since 2016 is starting at shortstop. We'll talk more about that later. On the mound tonight for the Reds, and pretty much it's been all year long. Not quite sure what you're going to get with Sal Romano. Well, you know, he was on the uptick really until his last time out, and the Cleveland Indians have ambushed a lot of pitchers so far this year. So, you know, best really for Sal Romano to put that game in his rearview mirror, think more about what he did to be successful against the Mets in New York. He threw the ball extremely well that day, only gave up one earned run. He's a guy that's got to attack the strike zone, as with all teams that have a lot of left handed hitters, that change up has got to be very effective pitch tonight, and we'll see how he does with that. Well, he's facing a Milwaukee lineup that we mentioned at times struggles scoring runs, but two things they do consistently is they hit home runs and they can run. Well, they can run. I mean, they're not really all that athletic a team, but I think that they take a little bit of a page out of Craig Council's book where he likes to play everything. He knows he's got the home run hitters, but he also knows that you know not every team is defensively ready for teams that like to run. So you see when you, when you combine those two together, you're going to be able to score some runs, and they would have scored enough last night to, to beat the Reds. And what about tonight's starter, 33-year-old Junior Guerra? Uh, Guerra's a guy that has played all over the world just to keep his dream alive. He was originally signed as a, an everyday player, a catcher, as a matter of fact. And here he is right in the middle of the rotation for the pennant contending Milwaukee Brewers. He likes his fastball. Fastball, slider, occasional changeup, but mostly heaters and most of those at the top of the zone. All right, when we come back, Jim Day's been talking about Philip Urban for a couple of years now, going all the way back to spring training in Arizona. He'll have more on his guy when we return. Running lineup only at your Tri State Chevy dealer. Hi, Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. And by GMC. You know, with Jesse Winker out for the season, Scott Shebler still on the disabled list. The trade of Duvall that's opened up some playing time for some other guys. And no one has taken more advantage of it than Philip Irvin. Since the All-Star break and a bigger sample size now, we're talking about 26 games. 347 average, four home runs, including a walk-off home run, and 16 RBIs for the former first-round pick, Philip Irvin. And you check out our IGS bringing the energy. Highest slugging percentage by right-handed hitters since the All-Star break. Ronald Acuna Jr. continues to amaze in the league. But Philip Irvin, fourth on that list with a 625 slugging percentage since the break. And they've moved him up in the lineup. Where? Lineups, first pitch, all the actions coming up. Tom Brenneman, Chris Welsh, standing by. cities in and around Milwaukee that had as much as 11 to 15 inches of rain last night. Staggering amount. But it is beautiful as the day goes on and into the night expecting a beautiful day tomorrow for the series finale. Brewers won the opener last night. Jim Riggleman stacks him up this way. Hamilton in center. Urban in the two hole as Jim mentioned a moment ago. Scooter Jeanette bats third at second. Suarez again at short. His first start since April of 2016. Williams is in right. Barnhart behind the plate. Dielsen Herrera 
getting the nod over at third. Brandon Dixon again at first, and Sal Romano on the mound, and Junior Guerra starts it for the Brew Crew. Well, the Reds have seen him a fair amount, I think five times at least, Guerra. He is six and eight so far this year with a pretty good earned run average, right, of 3.7. He is a guy that will strike out almost a batter per inning. He likes his fastball. He'll throw that mainly, you know, up in the zone when a four-seamer, two-seamers go down, but he, he throws about equal amount of those, and his slider is his number one off-speed pitch. Well, he has thrown the ball very well in a couple of starts so far this season against the Reds. First pitch swinging is a soft one-hopper. This will be an infield hit all the way, or will it? No! What an unbelievable play by Arcia. Throwing out the fastest man in a game. Once a third baseman couldn't get to it, you thought, no way. No, you're right. It goes right over the barehanded attempt by Mike Moustakas right there. But R.C. is a guy that is a defense first shortstop, one of the best in the business right there. And when Guerra's on the mound, you're going to see Craig Council put him in the lineup more often than not because he knows he needs the defense, and he got it right there to start the game off. That is just an extraordinary play by R.C. Considering who was running. Wow. What a start. <laughs> so here is Irvin. Jim Day was talking a lot about him a moment ago and some of the numbers he's been putting up. Irvin clubbed a home run here last night. Just over 100 plus at bats for this former number one pick out of Sanford. Look at those numbers since a break. Nearly a 350 batter. 347 average for Irvin. And he 2 Talked about Guerra in his career against the Reds. He has an ERA of over five, but this year, an ERA fractionally over three. 11 and two thirds innings has allowed a total of four earned runs. And all of those came in one start. His other start, he went five and two thirds innings, allowed one hit, no runs at all. Roller by the mound. Arcia challenged again and up for the task. I'm not sure a shortstop can start a better game than he has tonight. The rest of the Brewers on defense presented by Ford. They'll move Yelich into left field. Christian Yelich. And Thames is in a lineup. That is no surprise at all against the Reds. Aguiar Shaw, Arcia, and Moustakis along the infield, and Kratz gets a nod behind the plate. Kind of funny, isn't it, that they have a couple of players in this Brewers defense that are playing out of position. Travis Shaw, not a second baseman. Thames is not a right fielder, really. But who do you hit it to? The best defender on the field, the first two batters. Former Brewers Scooter Jeanette checks in at 312. 18 home runs, 72 knocked in. 0 for 4 here last night. Of course, the Reds didn't have much of anything to shout about last night. They had two solo home runs in the second inning. There was it offensively until the ninth. The only two base runners they had in the game until the ninth inning. They had a single and a walk. Fastball at 93 just missed a little bit low. Yeah, you know, speed, velocity, really movement is not really the calling card of Junior Guerra. Command is, and just trying to sneak that pitch down the way, trying to get Scooter Jeanette to make an easy out. He may go with the splitter right here. That's a very effective pitch to lefties, too. Now the fastball. Some of you may have missed the news. A couple of very interesting trades were made late this afternoon, and both of them involved teams in the National League's Central Division. 
The Cubs acquired Daniel Murphy. Outstanding hitting second baseman from the Nationals. And the Nationals sent Matt Adams back to St. Louis. We'll get Chris's Welsh's thoughts on those deals. Sal Romano getting the ball when we return. Celebrating his 48th birthday today. He is the manager of these Milwaukee Brewers. Born in South Bend, Indiana. Ironically, wound up going to college in Notre Dame and then grew up here in Milwaukee. Yelich in left, Kane in center, Mustakas at third, Aguiar at first, Shaw at second, Thames in right, Kratz, Arcia, Guerra against 7 and 10 right hander Sal Romano. ERA at 5.31. Uh, coming off a very short outing against the Cleveland Indians the last time out, sometimes when that happens, and you've got extra rest and of course the Reds have six men in their rotation and you know, with off days and so on the guys are only pitching once a week. Sometimes you come out in a situation like that when you're really over amped up you know, you're too strong and you have a tendency to want to muscle everything. That little bleeder will fall in trapped was that ball by Urban good effort but just short almost sold that as a catch. Yep. Romano has made five starts against the Brewers, including two this year, and he has lost every single one of them. In fairness, he's not pitched all that badly against them this year. A pair of five inning starts, and in each start allowed two earned runs. But those are the numbers going back to three outings against his team a year ago. Now Lorenzo Cain. You got to keep an eye on Yelich. He has 14 stolen bases. He's only been thrown out twice. Kane, a 304 batter, has an on base percentage of nearly 400. We mentioned Romano couldn't get out of the second inning his last start. That was against the high flying Indians. He allowed six earned runs. They're throwing the ball well prior to that as Critch touched on briefly. Kane almost hit. He got hit by a pitch last night. Uh, the one he got hit with last night was a no doubter. He thought he got hit with this one. But it said it goes to 3 0 count. Ball four to Kane. Yeah, it just looks like Romano's a little bit too strong right now, amped up a little bit. Barnhart's going to go out and try to calm him down, but even evident on that 3 0 pitch right there, you can see that Lorenzo Kane was basically almost stepping out of the batter's box. No, and he wasn't, he had no interest at all in hitting that 3 0 pitch, and yet he still couldn't throw the ball in there. So it's time to take a step back, Sal, and kind of take a couple of deep breaths. Throw the ball down in the zone and let the hitters get themselves out because they're a tough team to overpower. He's only 24 years old. But well, this is his 42nd that. major league start. Point I guess I'm making is, is you know, 42 is not a lot, but it's certainly enough where you would think he would be able to harness some of that emotion in the opening inning of a game. Strike one on Moustakis, and perhaps he will settle down. One ball and one strike. Well, I think that's one of the things that you're in the process of evaluating on. Just because you give somebody, you know, 40 starts or 100 starts in a major league doesn't mean he's going to be a 15 or 20 game winner. Uh, it's not that easy. It's very difficult to pitch up here, and all the hitters are looking for something to hit. They don't care anything else about you. Right now, even when he makes a good pitch right there, he's not getting a call for a strike. So, you know, more deep breaths, more confidence, throw each pitch like you mean it. Two and one on Moustakas, a former Kansas City Royal. 
Fair back and threw a 94 mile per hour fastball by the third baseman. Yeah, but you know, I think the location of that is the key. I mean, it was right on the edge of the strike zone, kind of moving away. He's got tremendous movement, Romano does, which is one of the things that makes him interesting as a as a starting pitcher. But being able to change speeds on that fastball would also be a huge advantage. Went back to the same spot, got him swinging, same result. So a much needed out by the big right hander. That's a big out right there. You strike out the number three hitter. A lefty can come over there in a trade in order to jumpstart this offense. And he got a chance right now with a little ground ball from Aguilar to get out of this inning. No damage at all. Jesus 29 home runs, 89 runs batted in. He's an all star for the first time this year. And he started to, was able to hold up. He looked good at the plate here last night. He had three base hits, three singles. Had a single in the left, did a nice piece of hitting, getting a single into right in front of the home run from Shaw in the sixth inning, which gave the Brewers a lead for good, then had a, an infield hit in the seventh. Good location with that fastball. One ball, one strike. That was a 12 3 hit game this year for the Milwaukee first baseman. Yellow chance the most on his team. One more. Hammered down the line. And over to cut it off is Irvin. One run will score. An RBI double puts Milwaukee in front, one nothing. Looked like a slider that just kind of hung right there over the plate for Aguilar, and he's a guy. Of course, we put the barrel of the bat on it. It's going to be hit very hard. Had a three-hit night last night. Aguilar did, and he drives in the first run there with a double down the left field line. Now you got to face Travis Shaw with his 25th home run of the year here last night. 71 runs batted in for this Washington Courthouse, Ohio native. That was a big blow in the game last night. Reds had a 2 to 1 lead. Homer Bailey had an 0 and 2 count on Shaw. And he hit one down the right field line with a man aboard. Well, it was an on an 0 2 pitch right there, and Bailey wanted to come up and in on that pitch, probably to set up the next pitch, which would have been most likely a, a splitter down and away, but he never got that far as Shaw was able to park it. And he's got Shaw now uh, behind the fastball and ahead of the breaking pitch. He'll chase Travis Shaw. Really big hitter, big swing. Barnhart wants it down the dirt. Strikes on Travis Shaw. Runners at second and third. Only one out. Looked at a fastball right down the middle. Strike three. Now Shaw must have been looking for something off speed right there, and that one froze him with a fastball in the inner third and good pitch. And a couple of strikeouts in this inning from Romano. Here 
here's a guy that has always killed the Reds. And they're not even going to take a chance with Thames. They're going to walk him and face a catcher, Kratz. Bases loaded. Second walk of the inning, giving the pass to Thames. Kratz a 244 batter, four home runs, 13 knocked in. Breaking ball the way, ball one on Eric Kratz. Making his 34 start behind the plate, playing in his 42nd game overall. He actually pitched in three different games this year for the Brewers, one time against the Reds. That was at the end of June. Came over from the Yankees at the end of May. Guy's a big, strong dude. 6'4, 250 pounds. Base hit left field. They're going to hold the runner at third. One run will score. And it's 2 0 Milwaukee. Uh, Eric Kratz is living proof that you can hang around the big leagues a long time if you're a good receiver, a good teammate, and occasionally put the barrel on the ball. And he's able to rip that one. Look where the location is, though. I mean, just about anybody in that Brewer dugout is going to hit that pitch hard. And that's just a spot where you've got to stay away from. Same thing happened to Homer Bailey last night on a home run to Travis Shaw. There's nothing wrong with Bailey's stuff. And there's nothing wrong with Romano's stuff. It's where you're serving it up is the problem. Garcia, oh, what a down year he has had. So Defensive highly touted their yes, offense. Yes, offensive. So highly touted their number one prospect for a number of years and had a very solid, very solid 2017 season. And there's another hit. It's going to bring in one run. Here comes the second run. Throw to the plate, not in time. Four, nothing. And still batting. Romano's given up hits to Kratz hitting 240 and Arcia hitting 210. Well, again, you go back to the location of these pitches. I mean, they basically are all right in the same spot, which is thigh high on the inner third of the plate. You just can't pitch big leaguers right there and expect to get them out no matter how hard you try to throw. And I think this is a trap that you fall into when you're a young pitcher like Sal Romano. You start getting touched up a little bit. You rear back and you think, I'm going to try to even throw harder. And all that does is make you make more mistakes in a hitting part of the zone. Junior Guerra has two hits or both doubles in his 31 at bats this year. Four runs, four hits, two walks. Shortstop Suarez will play the first and the inning is over. Nine men back, four run score at the end of one, four nothing Milwaukee. When we were here early in the year, they did not start off playing well at home. You may remember they lost six of their first eight games here. But ever since then, they've gone 35 and 18. Yeah, they've got, I think, uh, 20. 20 of their next 35 games at home to finish out the season. They also have six off days. So they're going to be a well rested team playing right here in their own environs. These are the numbers Elk and Elk storyline the way they started off and what they've done since best in the National League 35 and 18 after that start.
the Eugenio Suarez for the first time since April the 14th 2016 is starting at shortstop that was the position he came up with you may remember originally with the Detroit Tigers and he is out of there on strikes Percy's homered in back to back games had the big one against the Giants Sunday and then he got the Reds off and running here yesterday every home run he hits from here on out is a career high it's 28 of them uh, you can kind of get the mood of that Reds dugout just from that little shot right there of Suarez and Philip Irvin, Billy Hamilton sitting there. I mean, you play, you know, one inning and all of a sudden you're down four nothing. It's tough at this time of year, you know, when you've been getting beat up all year long, you're on the way to, you know, hopefully not, but uh, conceivable to have another 90 loss season. And it, it's a tough time for the ball club. You've got an interim manager, you've got coaches that are not sure whether they're going to be back next year. You know, some guys are happy to be up here. Some guys are saying, well, I'm not going to get too close to these coaches because they may not be here next year. So you start playing for yourself. It's a whole different dynamic, and it's a very difficult thing for players to work through. And it's very tough to win games that way. That's why when you do get a well-pitched game, you've got to seize that opportunity, and the Reds are going to have to figure out a way to get back into this one. Well, I know you were very impressed with Homer Bailey last night. Bailey didn't throw the ball badly except a couple of bad you know locations but you just can't make location mistakes in a tight ball game and expect to win those games. Mason Williams celebrating his 27th birthday today a fly ball to right. So now Tucker Barnhart. Tucker had that hitting streak at six come to an end here last night. He does have a hit nine of the last 11. This guy's hit virtually everywhere up and down this Reds batting order. Remember, he was batting in that two hole for about a month. He's hit fifth, he's hit sixth, he's hit seventh, he's hit eighth. Here's a roller to the right side and Shaw from short right. Back to back perfect innings for Guerra. Brewers lead it early on. 4 0. At Dixon Barnhart, and for Suarez, it's filling in for his good buddy Jose Peraza. Jim Riggleman has been looking to get Peraza a day off. He's been one of the Iron Men, and tonight is the night. Suarez came up as a shortstop. And came to the Reds as a shortstop so nothing outside of the norm for him but don't look for it to be permanent in fact Jim Ruggleman looking for a day off for Suarez as well that might come tomorrow. All right Jim Day thank you very much. What's your seat like in this ballpark Jim fans always ask me you know where you are in and around the ballpark. We know you're all over Cincinnati but where are you here. At the far end of the Reds dugout in one of the least desirable. Uh, Really? Yeah. Why? I don't see much here. I'm, I'm pretty. Here we are, right here. I uh, where I have to sit, I'm pretty much watching the game on a monitor, like everyone at home. Okay. Well, we start making that part of our, you know. Early on in games, just to show folks at home exactly where is Jim Day, because you know you're Mr. Cincinnati USA.com, bouncing all over Cincinnati, and you hit behind that camera woman last night on that foul ball. A any response to that? Uh, I didn't have time to hide. There was no time to hide. It was basically close your eyes and hope it didn't hit me in the head. It did. We're glad. It Thank you for your concern, Tom. You know I am. I have your back all the time. Some of the others around here may not, but you know I do. <laughs> Two and one the count. On Lorenzo Keane, he walked and scored in the four run first.
Tapper down to third. Herrera. This throw pulls Dixon off the bag, and Dixon's lucky he didn't get hurt. That's where you see an arm or shoulder injury occur when the first baseman has to reach towards the oncoming runner, and then the runner makes contact with that arm. Kane busting it up the line. That'll be an error, I'm sure, on Herrera. Uh, Herrera's got some time. He just kind of soft pedals that throw over there, and the ball never even did get into Dixon's glove. It hit Kane on the back, it looked like. Well, that's a play for Brandon Dixon. You don't even want to put your arm out there because only bad things can happen. Well, you really got to keep an eye on Kane. 24 stolen bases. He's been thrown out seven times. And they scored that a base hit. Wow. Here's Moustakis. Romano struck him out his first time up. High pop up and a short level is a long run for Urban. But he's a good athlete. And he'll get there in time. For the second out of the inning. Jesus Aguilar stepping up there at an RBI double his first time up. Knocking in the first of four. For Barnhart. And that will retire the side. A nice bounce back second inning for big Sal Romano. Learn more at rbigame.com. Rated E for everyone. Nielsen Herrera to lead things off. Reds looking for their first base running against Junior Garrett, trailing. 4 nothing here in the top of the third inning. And that is a fair ball for Dielson. He will make the turn and go into second base with his first double of this season. He has three home runs and now he's added a fourth extra base hit. Trying to figure out where he fits best. I think the Reds are anxious to take a look at Herrera and see whether he'd be a piece off the bench, whether he can play every day somewhere. You know, there were some thoughts, obviously, when they traded him for Jay Bruce, that he'd be a guy that would be manning second base right now. But Scooter Jan is in firmly entrenched down there, so they've got to find out about Herrera. Talking to him the other day about playing left field, he said he doesn't care. But he knows is his hitting will determine whether he stays in the big leagues. That'll bring up Brandon Dixon, the Reds' first baseman, and batting in the eight hole tonight. Swung on and fouled out of play. Dixon getting yet another start at first. Of course, Joey Votto still on the table list. Dixon was 0 for 3 here last night. His first time up, he hit 
knock the cover off the ball. A line drive that nearly knocked Ryan Braun over, who caught it in the left field. Herrera leads out there at second. Reds trying to climb back in this one. And Herrera forever looking into the mitt. And finally, Dixon says, timeout. You know, Chris, I was starting to mention and did mention, but wanted to get your thoughts on the acquisitions that were made earlier today by two of the top teams in the National League Central. There's a ground ball to short. Arcia will play it to first. On to third goes Herrera. One out. Daniel Murphy goes to the Cubs from Washington. And Matt Adams comes back to St. Louis where he began his career from a national. Yeah, the Murphy deal I think was interesting because the Cubs were the team that claimed Murphy when he was put on revocable waivers, which means, you know, every other team in the National League decided to pass him up. Either they didn't need a second baseman or they feel that his injuries to his knee earlier this year, and he's owed $4 million between now and the end of the year, $17.5 million overall uh, this year for, for Murphy. So he'll play second base he'll also be off the bench and with regards to Matt Adams you know I think it's one of those situations where you didn't know what you were missing until he was gone and ever since he was jettisoned away from the St. Louis Cardinals he turned himself into a pretty good hitter always has been a red cutter, that's for sure that's for sure All right, runner at third for Romano who laces one to center a base hit first Hit swinging, and that's his second RBI of the year on just the second hit of the year for Sal Romano. And the Reds on the board, 4-1. to one. Hey, every little bit helps right here, even when you help yourself. He goes right down there, puts a nice little swing on it, just put the ball in play, Sal. And he dumps it in front of the center fielder. Got a three-run ball game. And rolling to third inning. Here's Billy Hamilton. Thrown out on a great play made by Arcia. Leading off the game. Brewers begin play in second place in the National League Central. The Cubs were off last night. The Cubs are hosting the Detroit Tigers tonight. Craig Council's team at three back. The Cardinals continue to win. They stomped the Dodgers last night out in Los Angeles. They'll play again later tonight. Three and a half back. And both the Brewers and the Cardinals very much in the hunt for that wild card race. Right now, Milwaukee actually has a half game lead. On both Colorado and Philadelphia, percentage points as well over St. Louis with the Dodgers two back. That's going to be fun to watch. Milwaukee, Colorado, Philly, St. Louis, and the Dodgers all within two games, and they only take two spots. That's a nice piece of hitting right there by Hamilton. Drops it into center field with a single. Three hits in the inning for the Reds. Romano advancing on to second base. Now the hit by Herrera hit fairly sharply right down the third baseline. Every other one is one of these jobs right here. A good pitch by Guerra, but results in a base hit. A little slap job by Billy. Take a couple hundred of those. Somebody better remind him he's got Sal Romano ahead of him. On the base paths. And I'm sure Freddie Benavides did just that. You don't want to outrun your pulling guard. No, you don't. You Got to follow the big fella. And he's uh, nearly big enough to be an offensive guard, he being Romano. 
And this guy right here is about the perfect body for a free safety. Irvin. Well, he's got bat speed too, and that's what have excited the Reds about it. He's got four home runs now, and he's beginning to hit the ball hard. Grounded out in the first inning on a nice play by Arcia. I just remember that piece that uh, Jim Day did. It was a great piece on Irvin and Jim singing his praises. And that was at least two, three years ago now in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. Uh, the one thing that Irvin's going to have to adjust to is how the league adjusts to pitching him. If you look at the home run balls that he's hit, they've all been on the inner third of the plate. Most of them have been up. If you start getting that ball in the outside corner, that's going to start requiring some adjustment on the part of Irvin. But until that time, you hit the hangers. Broken bat base hit. And Romano, they will hold it third, and it's bobbled, and now Romano will take off of the plate. Here comes a throw home. And Romano slides awkwardly, but he's safe. And on to third goes Hamilton. That'll be a single and then an error on Thames out there in right. And all of a sudden, it's a four to two ball game. So I would imagine no RBI there for Irvin because they had held the runner at third. Now, this is a little bit of controlled hitting right here by the Reds. Opposite field by Romano and Philip Irvin. Little dunk job by Hamilton. And kind of peppering away here at Junior Garrett. What looked like it was going to be a runaway game is all of a sudden very interesting, even made more so now with. Jeanette and Suarez back to back coming up here. Indeed. Jeanette grounded out to the second baseman his first time up. Urban can run. Big lead over there at first, three of four. And stolen base attempts is Urban. Scooter lifts a fly ball to left field, plenty deep enough to bring in Hamilton. And that makes it a four to three game, a three spot. And still not finished yet in the third inning. Jeanette. His 73rd run batted in. How about the bottom of the order getting it done here. Yes. Good hitting in this inning. Especially the base hits by Romano. You mentioned putting it in play. Hamilton, if it's down, staying on it. Drops a base hit in there. And Urban muscling one into right. Here's Suarez. Swing and a miss. Urban running in a line drive center field. And coming in to get it is Kane to win the inning. It's a good play. But we have a ball game. Reds are back into saying they score three and they're down by one. The entire morning throwing he's a left handed pitcher had his left arm operated on and spent the entire morning throwing the kids right handed. He signed autographs. He took pictures. He's a good kid, a Cincinnati kid, and kudos to him for doing that. He has been getting grief, though. You see that brace on his left arm with the Beacon Orthopedics logo on it, and it is the color of red. And his teammates have been letting him know over and over and over about that. Well, his wife, Erin, uh, grew up over on the east side of Cincinnati, wonderful family. Obviously, he's a terrific young man. And we wish him nothing but the best. And Travis Shaw is homer for a second straight night. So no sooner do the Reds get a three spot.
to pull within one on a 1 0 pitch. Bernie Brewer heads down the slide, celebrating the long ball, number 26 now for Shaw. Looked like some kind of an off speed pitch early in the count right here. Take another look at it. I think it was just a change up that Shaw's got good play coverage. Struck him out on the fastball the first time up and tried to get him a little off speed stuff right there. Hey, one follow up with Brent Suter, Tom, is that he and his wife are expecting their first baby in October. That's great. Wish him thoughts and prayers for a happy, healthy delivery. So, with rehabbing that left elbow of his, uh, of course, he'll be going back and forth to Beacon to see Dr. Kremchek for checkups on that one, but he'll have plenty of time to walk the halls with the baby. Dr. Kremchek is the man. <laughs> Guys make a decision. You know, they want to see Kremchek have to do the Tommy John or Dr. James Andrews. It's been really one or the other. Dr. Kremchek's our guy. Strike three called to Thames, first out of the inning. Lord knows you and I both have spent enough money over there at Beacon. I'll tell you what, you've been all beat up. I'm all beat up, and now no longer. Uh, I'm put back together. Feel like 100%. I can walk all the way to the mailbox and back, and and your shoulder doesn't hurt. Only need one bag of ice. <laughs> Line drive caught by Suarez. Second time in two at bats, and Eric Kratz hits a line drive nearly in the same spot. Last time it went in there for a base hit. He just rips that one. A little humpback line drive. As Suarez back at shortstop makes a nice catch off. Told me before the game he was really excited about playing shortstop. Because he remembers playing there every day for so long. And he knows it's temporary, but excited about being back there. Well, you know, there's a lot of people speculated that as he's got a chance to. Make a play here, but really not much for one. That ball was killed by RC. Well, here's a guy that can't buy a hit all year long, and he has hit two rockets in this game. Well, I mean, he's only going to hit if you put it in a spot in the zone where he can hit it. If you look where he strides, I'd love to be able to see that shot again, just like we had right there, and maybe slow it down to show you where his front foot goes. He steps directly towards the shortstop. By doing that, he'll, he's going to step out here. And by doing that, he eliminates the, the ability to hit that part of the strike zone. So all you really have to do with RC is throw the ball down and away, you're going to get him out. But if you throw it on the inner part of the plate, as hard as he swings, he's going to get his hits. Here's Guerra. He grounded out to the shortstop, ending that four-run first inning. And Romano ahead of him at 0-2. Five runs, seven hits for Milwaukee. Three runs and four hits for the Red Legs. And he gets away and. The runner will easily advance on to second base. A wild pitch on Romano. Well, that is a wild one. I mean, anytime you bounce it in front of the plate, you know, you're just taking your chances whether the catcher can get his body in front of it or not. One more out to get for Romano. And a soft ground ball to the glove side for Suarez, inning over. But a home run by Travis Shaw makes it a two-run Milwaukee lead at the end of three. Of the time off, rest certainly can can be really helpful both mentally and physically. But you know, I I had a I had a, a DL worthy. 
sort of thing. So uh, some time off and, and just rehabbing and, and spending time uh, building building momentum towards playing full time. Hopefully we'll, uh, I'll be able to take off whenever I get back. Ran the bases for the first time before the game today and he believes without any setbacks that he will be eligible or will come off the disabled list when he is eligible to come off. Well, we know, Jim, you'll be all over that story and uh, certainly checking in with Joey as you do uh, just about every day. And so thanks for that update on Joey Votto. All right, Reds come to bat. Mason Williams to lead things off here in the top of the fourth inning. The Brewers lead 5-3. That ball drilled into right center field off the bat of Williams. It will go all the way to the wall. And Mason in with his third double since coming to the Cincinnati Reds big league roster. Now five hits now for the Reds. They had four last inning where they scored three runs. Williams is trying to show everybody that he's worth keeping around. You know there's more and more emphasis I think with the the preponderance of right handed pitching out there. there. There are teams out there everywhere looking for left handed hitters. Craig Council, I was talking to him before the ball game today about that subject, and he said, Yeah, we've got a lot of them. I wish we had more. I mean, it's really tough for right handers to work through a whole lineup of lefties. And how many left handed starters do you see, you know, in this division, number one, versus, you know, or, or the entire league? There just aren't that many. I mean, just look in this series. We're not going to see a single one. And with the Cubs, uh, starting John Lester in their series against Detroit. I think we're going to see all right handed starters from both teams in the Chicago series and so not a left handed starter on this road trip at least right now. Line drive base hit left field by Barnhart they're going to hold Williams at third. As Yelich gets the ball back in quickly and the Reds have something cooking oh, right yeah. back at him here in the fourth first Bacon's and third not out. Solid contact against Junior Guerra here tonight. A great council thinking, oh, four runs in the first inning, off to the races, going to be a, kind of a laugher. Not so. Now Herrera. He led off the three run third inning with a double up the third base line and scored the first run in the inning. And now a chance to get the Reds closer down by two and nobody out. It will be interesting to see how the Reds maneuver getting Herrera at bats through the remainder of this year. Talk about Scooter Jeanette and Votto's absence getting a little playing time at first base. We haven't seen that yet, which would open up the chance for Terrera to play a little second base. Reds are trying to win games, and guys like Jeanette and Suarez, the positions that Herrera would be likely to fill in to play, those guys play every day and want to play every day. And of course it's a total experiment putting Herrera in the outfield. But you know you, you look at all the guys Chris that they have available to play the outfield right now whether it's Mason Williams or Preston Tucker taking Hamilton out of the mix Shevler's coming back soon. I mean it seems like it would make sense that Herrera would get a little more look than maybe some of those other guys you just brought in. Well again you're playing him out of position though if you're bringing putting him yeah. in the outfield. I mean you want to put somebody out there who can you know be successful where you put him. And if he's out there worried about his defense catching fly balls getting jumps on line drives and so on sometimes it distracts his offense. Came in as a pinch hitter last night a quick A.B. Three pitch strikeout. Well, he's in a big situation here. Runners on the corners and nobody out. Two balls and two strikes. The 
do it again. It's a little bit of a choke up here with a couple of strikes on Herrera, just trying to put the ball in play. He sees the importance of that right now. Even a double play brings the ball a run in. Brandon Dixon. The Reds have action in their bullpen. They have the left hander Amir Garrett throwing. So this is one of those times right now if you're Sal Romano in the on deck circle you, you've got mixed emotions right here. You're almost you know hoping for a ground ball double play to keep you in the ball game or, or a three run big fly a three run big fly to get you off the hook. Yeah. Anything else besides those two outcomes <laughs> and it's over for Romano. Brandon Dixon, he grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Big swing and a miss, 7 2. All right, now it's Dixon's turn to kind of quiet things down, shorten everything, including your, your grip on the bat, your approach, maybe widen your stance a little bit. Really got to put the ball in play. I was surprised Herrera didn't pull the trigger on a pitch. And, you know, with a runner at third base, you, you just cannot take strike three, especially one in that middle part of the zone. One thing about Garrett, man, he's kind of fearless the way he pitches. I mean, he's only throwing 92, 93. It doesn't look like he's got, you know, a, a lot of extra pop on the ball. It doesn't have a lot of crazy movement. I mean, he just comes right after you. I'm not trying to trick you, although it looks like they're calling for the. He shakes off the slider to come into a, come to a fastball. We're going to come to the plate. A bad throw in the runner's safe. Terrible throw by Mustakas. And Williams slides in safely after the short hop throw to make it a 5 to 4 game. Uh, Williams going on contact right here. I, I think maybe the Reds are thinking, hey, run because they may be trying to get a double play right here. And Crash just can't come up with it. Well, we thought those would be the only two scenarios where Romano was not pinch hit for. And with one out in the inning, they'll have him up there, I would assume, to bunt, although he knocked in a run with the base in his last time. Yeah, the problem here with this situation, though, you let him hit and he hits a ground ball and you're out of the inning with nothing. If you punt the runners over, at least you put two in the scoring position. Take another look at the swing. He got the base hit on him, drove a run in. That was only his second hit at 33 at bats all year. Well, then he's probably not doing this at bat. He has four sacrifices. I'm not so sure why Romano waits so long to get down into the crouch. 
that you have when you pivot around and get the bat in the angle out in front of home plate. There's no rule that says you just can't get ahead and get set up right from the very beginning. Get yourself comfortable right out in the front of the plate. Get your nose out there near the strike zone. You want to get your head as close to contact as you possibly can. Oh, and two on Romano. You know, you talk to baseball people all over the game, those that watch the game every day. As that on the appeal, they said he didn't offer the pitch. They will tell you the state of bunting is the worst it's ever been that people have been around the game. And I don't know what else pitchers have to do. Huh. A little sleight of hand by yeah. Sal the Magician. Adrian Johnson waiting for him to pull a rabbit out of his hat. <laughs> Well, he'll get another chance. And it's a sand result. Now, one of the problems, Tom, is I'm not so sure that they plan enough coming up anymore. Um, and number two, that attempt right there just showed me he was kind of afraid of the baseball. When you watch pitchers practice bunting, whether it's in spring training or whether it's in every, and this is every organization, they're bunting either off a pitching machine, which is throwing the ball right down the middle every time, or off a coach who's throwing the ball about 60 miles an hour. There's no fear. You get a guy throwing 94 miles an hour out there, all of a sudden sure. in the back of your mind, like, I'm not getting my head too close. Yeah, I'm afraid of that baseball. And that's what it looked like. Right now, Billy Hamilton. He had a base hit into center field, scored his last time up, down strike one. Reds fell behind 4 0. They made it 4 3. Brewers got a home run to make it 5 3. And now the Reds answer to make it a one run game. And Hamilton with a chance to change that right here and right now. Gary gets in front 0 oh 2. The pitcher's club and Billy's going to get a base hit out of this. Well, if they if scored a base hit. Yeah, it'll be an infield hit probably because any time it goes up through the box, it's very difficult for, to blame the pitcher for not being able to field it. But the fact that you were not able to get a runner over on a sacrifice punt costs the run right there and it costs tying the ball game up. So the Reds have the bases loaded. And here comes Philip Urban. One for two already his third at bat. We're only in the fourth inning. Rounded his short his first time up. Had a single into right center field. In the three run third. Big chance for Urban and the Reds. Bases loaded. Two are out. And Guerra continues to work out of the stretch. The ball hits the umpire. Dead ball. Dead ball. So one run will score, and they'll send the other runners back to their respective bases. It'll be a base hit for Urban. And that ties the game. That was actually a, a benefit to the Reds right there because it looked like that ball was going right to the second baseman. Look where Shaw is playing. Right behind where that baseball is, and then it hits Hunter Wendelstaff, the second base umpire. And as soon as it hits the umpire when he's pulled in the infield like that before it goes past the fielder it is a dead ball. Let me ask you a question though Chris why why would umpires and people ask me this a lot with the bases loaded like that where you have runners moving everywhere right. Why would an umpire be stationed 
sitting in the infield grass. Yeah, they've been stationed in there for a long, long time. He, he, even with a two-man crew, you're going to see a guy in there in case there's a play at second base. They get a better view there. But could they, they stand right the behind side. the second base back? Sometimes they've, they've get begun to do that a little bit now, but only because replay gives you such a look of did he come off the bag by a fraction of an inch and he want to be out near the bag. But that's traditionally the spot where umpires are. And they're always asking fielders, am I in your way? Am I in your way? It just it's, seems emba it's embarrassing for the umpire, but it sure benefited the Reds. It just seems to me, with, you know, they've been doing it that way a long time. That's fine. But it just seems to me where it would make no sense at all for that very reason what we just saw. Well, and the, I mean, other if the ball goes in the outfield, you know, and it hits the umpire. It's already a hit anyway. Well, no, actually, if it hits an umpire in the outfield, no, no, I'm after just saying it passes the fielders. It's a live ball. The umpire at that point is, is treated like a blade of grass. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about the rule part of it. I'm saying for the batted ball, if he's standing in the outfield, as there's a pitch in the dirt, they throw down and oh boy, the ball was dropped by Moustakis, who's already made a bad throw in this inning to cost his team a run, although he wasn't charged with an error. He should have been. Yeah, really, the, the Brewers ought to have four errors already here on the night. I mean Brandon Dixon is out from here to there if they just do a, a basic throw and catch. He actually pinned that ball Kratz did between his arm and his rib cage. I'm trying to figure out if, if they did find another error somewhere in this inning because I still only have him for one error and the scoreboard says they have two errors. They did give one to Moustakis at third base on that throw. Yeah. They should have. And then Thames had the other one. We had that one an inning ago. Five-five game in Scooter Jeanette. The count of one ball and two strikes. And here's another little roller. And this is a base hit to drive in a run. Holy Moses, things are going the right way for the Red Legs here in the fourth inning. That is their third straight infield hit. Three in a row. Or it just goes to show you, you hang in there and you get a little luck on your side, and things will bounce your way. Junior Garris got to be wondering, what did I do wrong here to deserve this kind of luck? I mean, Brandon Dixon should have been out at least once. Brewers have been throwing the ball all over the place. You got an infield hit by Hamilton. You had technically an infield hit that looked like it was going to be an out if it doesn't hit the umpire by Irvin. And now you get an infield roller. So driving a run by Scooter and the Reds lead for the first time tonight. Corbin Burns is loosening in the Milwaukee bullpen. And here is Suarez. Reds have nine grand slams tied for the most in baseball. So, you know, Chris, I want to circle back to that. And, and you're looking at the umpire here, okay? Now, I, I don't care how long they've been doing it. The point I'm making is, is that right now, he is standing basically in front of Travis Shaw. The runners are not going to be running here. You're not going to have a play at second base. So why wouldn't he be standing in the outfield? Well, you don't grass? know you don't have a play at second you're base. Right. You could have a pickoff play at second base. And if he's standing in center field, he's not going to get a good look from the outfield side than he walked True. from the infield side. I, I mean, you. there are a lot of reasons why they have put that umpire inside. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, there, there are some times nowadays where some umpires are beginning to start, you know, putting themselves out in this area so that they see that tag play at second base from a different angle in case the runner comes off the bag just a little bit. But the traditional way of doing it and the way all the umpire supervisors want them is where Hunter mm. Wendelstad is right now. All right. You know, the, the thing about umpires, they have to be ready for the unexpected. Because anybody can call the easy stuff. 
we've seen some unexpected here in this inning. Oh boy, have we have been a wild inning. They should have had Williams thrown out of the plate, and he scored the first run in this inning. That was in an error. You have Hamilton with an infield hit. Urban, a bouncer that hits the umpire for an infield hit. Jeanette, an infield hit to knock in a run. And now a swing and a miss. It hits a catcher. And the Reds will get another run. And Junior Gary, you said it a minute ago, but he just has to be wondering what in the world is going on. That's a swing and a miss. I think I think it must look like a cross up. Yeah. Kratz looking for breaking ball. You can see him start to move his glove towards first base. The ball is a fastball that moves in the other way. <laughs> Unbelievable half inning. And it's not over. Reds have scored four. And now it is over. On a strikeout of Suarez. Nine men bat in one of the most bizarre innings you'll ever see in a game of baseball. By your local Ford dealer, Ford. Go further. And by Cincinnati Children's, now ranked number two in the nation by U.S. News and World Report. So now Sal Romano who we thought for sure would be taken down is a pinch hitter just a short while ago. The beneficiary of a couple of defensive errors by the Brewers and three straight infield hits two of which knock in runs in a four run Cincinnati fourth and now Romano is given a lead. Well he still has some bullpen action down there if he wants to glance over his shoulder but he's got to be asking himself the question. Sal can you pitch two innings right here. That's all you've got to do is pitch two innings. If you do, you're going to end up getting a win tonight if the Reds can hold on. But you certainly don't want to start this inning off with a leadoff walk. And Danny Darwin is going to go out there and maybe break the tension a little bit. You know, Darwin was telling me that when he goes out there to the mound, he never talks about mechanics, and he certainly doesn't usually talk about. You know, scouting reports on the players or something like that. You, you'll give them one thing to think about, like, hey, how about showing me a good breaking ball right here? Or let's go down and away with a fastball here. Show me what you got. And he, in a way, he kind of reminds me of what Pete Rose used to do when he would come out for the mound occasionally. And he basically, he, I remember one time anyway, he asked me, hey, uh, is this guy better than you? I'm like, no. Okay, show me. And with that, he was gone. I mean, so. You don't need a roadmap. You just need some motivation. Well, once the Reds have given this guy a two-run lead, he comes out and throws three straight pitches out of the strike zone, and now comes back to make it three and one. Top of the order for the Brewers: Yelich, Kane, Ustakis. Came with a three-one fastball. It's fouled away by Yelich to a single score and struck out looking. Field backing up on him with room is Irvin at the track. One away. Well, yeah, saw Yellows go the other way last night. A long way last night. Boy, he's got some tremendous power that run. Reds once again have Amir Garrett up and throwing, and he's joined down in that Reds bullpen by Michael Lorenz. And here's Lorenzo Cain. He's been on base twice, walked, scored, and an infield hit. They're in a rain delay in Washington, D.C., which must mean they're just expecting it to rain. They probably just stopped the game. <laughs>
We were saying that now, and maybe we ought to explain. I was getting ready to say, for those of you that weren't with us, when we were in D.C. this year, a couple of weeks ago, Friday night, beautiful night, kept hearing it was going to rain, hearing it was going to rain, five minutes before, ten minutes before the start of the game. They called the game off to the astonishment of everyone who was in the stadium at the time. And it would not rain until 9.30 that night. They'd have gotten the game in. And we ended up playing a day-night doubleheader the next day. Two balls and two strikes on Kane. The Atlanta Braves are leading the Pirates. Atlanta got a shutout last night and shutting out the Buccos tonight in the seventh inning, five to nothing. Well, they brought up that youngster last night you were talking about, 20-year-old. Coming up and getting the job done for the Braves. Well, they brought up so many young, talented players and or pitchers. Acuna, Albies, and the list goes on and on. Pitches in this game for Romano. We're just one out into the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the 3 2. Herrera. Throw in time for the second out of the inning. Well, why not bring man's best friend to Great American Ballpark for one of our Reds Bark in the Parks presented by Rachel Ray Nutrition Program? Arrive early, we have great pet activities, samples in the Kroger fan zone, a big pregame parade. You can walk your dog around the field. Purchase your Bark in the Park package today. Reds.com slash dog. It's our always a very, very popular event. We have two more left. The next home stand, and then that final week of September. Moustakas has not had a good night in the field, and he's 0 for 2 at the plate. He could have easily been charged with two errors in that last inning. Made a bad throw on a ball hit right at him. Should have thrown a runner out of the plate. And then on a pitch that was in the dirt, they had Brandon Dixon hung out to dry at third. The throw was right on the money by Kratz, and Moustakas dropped the ball. Romano after falling behind to the first batter 3 and 0 Danny Darwin came out there and he got down to business. Hit the date etc for Jose Altuve the star for the Houston Astros well the ball that he kept recently was a little different Altuve went from double A straight to the major leagues and was on a rehab assignment at triple A and actually got his first triple A hit he decided to make the tradition at triple A kept the baseball first triple A hit so he went backwards to achieve a first if you will. That's pretty cool. Well, they need him back they have uh, you know they started the season like gangbusters and they have really struggled here in fact uh, the Oakland Athletics have moved into a first place tie with the Houston Astros and they had a pretty commanding lead there for quite some time. The, the A's are the most amazing story in baseball as far as I'm concerned. Nobody saw that team being a team at this point in the year 25 games over 500. That's amazing. I bet you most baseball fans can't name three guys on that <laughs> team. Right. Even even real baseball fans. Mason Williams started the Four run fourth inning with a double in the right center field. Junior Garris still out there working it. There's a drive the other way. Yelich will back up on it. One ball. One 
playing here in the Cincinnati fifth. And the Reds have a 7 to 5 lead. They've come all the way back from 4 0 down and then 5 3 down. Here's Tucker. He singled and scored in the fourth. One for two in the game. on the location there on the inside corner. One and two on Barnhart. Found out of play and it remains in one ball and two strikes. Count for Romano knocking on the door of 70 to get through the first four. 81 for Guerra, one out into this fifth. Yeah, with Junior Guerra, they're counting innings, and if you're Sal Romano, you're definitely counting innings. One run games are nothing new for this Milwaukee team. They have played a pile of them. And there's an at bat that got away. And that's the kind of at bat where sometimes you see a manager say that's enough. I don't think it's going to happen right now with Council. But Guerra was ahead of Barnhart at one ball and two strikes and a lot of nibbling going on and ends up being his first walk of the game. And nibbling is not his M.O. as you touched on earlier. Brewers are 24 and 17 in one run games this year. That's the most one run wins in the National League so far this season. That's a lot of one run games overall. Sure though. is. 41 of them. Can't believe you didn't give me a little credit on my math there. I mean, I was right off the top of my head 24 and 17. Normally you're quick to beat me down. I would have. I mean, no, I, I was waiting for just one time. Uh -huh. One time. Did you read that somewhere? I, I probably did, but it's irrelevant. <laughs> nice reading. <laughs> Thank you. It's the arithmetic part that was tough. It was, but one time I got one right. Dog on it. How many is that total? That would be one. That would be one. That's why I was looking for just the one time. I'm at 24 and 17. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. <laughs> we'll come back after break. Yeah, get my get my shoes off. <laughs> Breaking ball to Dielson Herrera misses outside. One ball and one strike. Herrera doubled and scored in the third. He was a big out. Struck out looking with runners at second and third in the fourth inning. Runner takes off. Herrera swing and a miss. Throw down to second base. And they tried to hit and run, I would assume. Otherwise, you're not having Barnhart straight steal here. And he's easily thrown out. I, I mean, even when... I mean, that's a hard pitch to put the bat on the ball, but you still got to at least foul that ball off. I mean, the whole idea on a hit and run is basically... Put your bat on the ball number one. 
Number two, if you get a pitch that you can hit on the ground, opposite, then you do that. And they're going to go right back to the same spot because Herrera's evidently got a, a black hole there. Second ballpark gets right under the main scoreboard out there and left. A place to catch all the Reds action. Visit Reds.com. Come down and see us next week. These Brewers will be in town. It's a quick three game series and Reds go right back on the road. All right, Romano given a 7 to 5 lead. Gave up the four runs and the four hits with a couple of walks in the first inning. And so ever since then, he settled in nicely. Gave up the one solo home run to Shaw, who will bat second here in the Brewers fifth. Aguiar to start things off. One ball and one strike. Well, those last two pitches by Romano, that 92 mile hour sinker, he's got great action on that pitch. And you see him throwing it now, now that he's got, what, 90 pitches or so, 75 pitches under his belt, 73? I mean, it, it it's amazing how much better your command is when you just back off just a hair. Sometimes really hard to do the first thing in the ball game, though. Reds are just trying to crowd. Aguilar just every time you can. The ball that he did hit very hard for that double in the first inning. That was out over the plate. Just about thigh high. One hopper back to the mound and Romano will take care of the big first baseman. So here comes Shaw who was struck out and Homer in the game tonight. I mean, Aguilar might be the only guy in, the, in this league bigger than Romano. I mean, is there somebody else? I'm trying to think. Now that Matt Adams shed a few, he's no longer in that race. I'm trying to think, looking up on that scoreboard of all the other teams in the league. I think you're right. Over in the American League, there's a big Aaron Judge. Yeah. Here's Shaw. I don't think he's going three bills, though, do you? No. Aguilar's got to be. He's close. In that area. They have Romano listed at 270, but well, he might be a little bigger now. Old foul. Three balls and two strikes now on Shaw. Statcast AI powered by AWS. What about the spray chart for this left handed batter? Uh, gives you reason why the Reds are shifting right there. Herrera, Jeanette, Dixon all on that side of the infield. That's where he hits it. Comes a 3 2 once more to Shaw, and this ball is in the air straight away center field. This will be playable for Hamilton. And that's the second out of the inning. So, going back to the top of the order, the third time through, the dreaded third time through that we continually hear about over and over and over again. Romano's pitched better this third time through the order than 
either of the first two times. He's retired each of the five batters. You know, sometimes a sinker ball pitcher and Romano is that when you get just a little bit tired, the ball has a tendency to sink a little bit more. Although he's not exactly pounding the bottom of the zone, I mean, he still has kind of a big, violent delivery. Only what, 23 years old, Romano is? Just turned 24. Just turned 24. Yep. A lot of guys 24 years old pitching in double A right now. Lane's a big swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Now Bartolo Colon is listed at 285. I would believe that. And more. The big sexy is his nickname. Jim Day loves to say that. Anytime he can work in a Bartolo Colon highlight, he will. To get that in there. We're going to have a. Uh... Jose Altuve highlight, I think, out of Jim Day tonight. Here's a 2 2 delivery. Thames <laughs> can't believe that's called right strike three. But it is. So Romano's really getting it together here. He's retired seven straight. Mustakas <laughs> drops the ball. On a play where they had Dixon out, three straight infield hits. One of them by Jeanette knocks in a run. And then he had a swing and a miss by Suarez, which we never got to. Yeah. And we had, we had a failed bunt, which turned into a strikeout by Romano. And we had a, a baseball hit the umpire. It, uh, I love that inning. Yeah, the Reds certainly love that inning. I mean, that was fun. Hunter's over there working on those fingernails. One ball and one strike on Brandon Dixon. The night apparently is over for Sal Romano. And right now he would be in line for a win if this really solid group of pitchers the Reds have in their bullpen when they have a lead. I mean, this is a really good group. When they hand the ball over to Lorenzen, Amir Garrett. Now Lorenzen is standing in the on deck circle. And then you get to Jared Hughes and David Hernandez and of course Rysel Iglesias. I mean that's a that's a rock solid quintet when you have the lead. That ball clobbered by Dixon to one hop the wall. And Brandon with a double to start the sixth inning against Junior Guerra. Now they kept pounding Dixon inside fastball after fastball, decided to go slider, and there it is, hanging right over the center of the plate, and Dixon puts some wood to it. Right now, are you going to send uh, Lorenzen up there to punt? No. Absolutely not. Brewers get four more innings at the plate. And even as good as this Reds bullpen has been, I'm not guaranteeing, I'm not assuming that they're not going to score. I need more runs and lots of them. Of course, Lorenzo would like to hit the ball to the right side to at least move the runner to third base at the very least. I know it's only BP, but boy, did he put on display today. You and I were watching him. You were excited about that. Man, I mean, you? this guy swings a bat. This guy's an athlete. And at least he shows bunt. I mean, there are just so many guys in baseball that are playing now can only do one thing. They can only play one position. This guy, this guy's an athlete. And for those of us that couldn't do anything athletically, and I'm not speaking for you, of course, you pitched in the major leagues, but for the rest of us common folk. These are the guys you love to watch. So 
They're having Lorenzen at least the first two pitches. Square around a bunt. Now the question is you keep the bunt on him right here. This is one thing I always remember Dusty Baker saying that you know, if I get a, a, a position player up there I never want to put the bunt on with one strike because if he fouls it off now he's got a two strike hole and he's trying to get the runner over to third base. He may not be able to do that with two strikes. Just different philosophy not saying one is better than the other. The battle away, good eye by Lorenzo. See if two one they let him swing away. Doesn't appear like that's going to be the case. Nope. That pitch almost hit him and he fouls it off out of play. Well, that's just bad form up there. He's got his pitching fingers wrapped around the barrel of the bat, facing the baseball. Very fortunate he didn't get one of those pinched. Lorenzen in 20 at bats has three home runs this year. He has one sacrifice. Think he's still bunting with two strikes. No sign of a bunt there. Three balls, two strikes on Michael Lorenzen. Look at those pinch hitting numbers. And officially, that's what he's doing right now is pinch hitting. He might end up staying in the game, of course, on the mound. But right there, he's up to pinch hit for Romano. <laughs> Cleveland Indians, second straight night. They are taking it to the Boston Red Sox. Look out. Try proving, I think, at least for the first two games of that series, that real good pitching can shut down real good hitting. And the Indians have real good starting pitching. Three and two to count. Struck him out on a high fastball. So, all that for that. All right, what else is going on around baseball? Let's check in with Brian Giesenslaw. Hi, Brian. Stuff, Ryan. Thank you. Here comes Trey Council to get Junior Guerra. So he gets through five and a third innings here tonight. And uh, look, for a Reds fan, you're not going to feel bad for the guy, but if you're a Brewers fan, you got to feel bad for the guy. Hang with him. Gives up seven, and I'm not sure three of them were his fault. This will be our skyline chili call to the bullpen. We're back in a moment. Field. That will push Yelich into right field. Thames out of the game, and now on the pitch is right-hander Corbin Burns. Young guy, he's only 23 years old. Burns is drafted by the Brewers, fourth round, 2016. So he's come up to the big leagues pretty quick. Out of St. Mary's College in California. Yeah, they're normally known as a really good basketball school out there in California. They're normally taking on Gonzaga every year to win that conference championship. The home of uh, Al Bearclaw, Tom Candiotti. Bill Doran go out there for one year? The old Bill Doran from 1922. Yeah, yeah our Bill Doran went to Miami. Yeah. The pride of Melt Healthy High. The Owls. 
love Mount Healthy. Back in the days when they had John Drunkemeyer as their great basketball coach out there. The Owls had the Slifka twins, big league soccer players. Pretty quick move by Burns right there. I did Very. not think that Dixon is really all that far off the bag. I put that one away in your memory banks. Well, Dixon's been a busy man out there on the bases. He should have been picked off third. And now they try and catch him napping out at second base, but he's still standing. And leading one and two to Billy Hamilton. Just throws a fastball right by him at 95 miles per hour, two out of the inning. A good arm right here for Corbin Burns. Burns made his major league debut on the 10th of July. The Brewers are in Miami. They brought him up two days prior. He had been primarily a starter. He worked in six games out of the bullpen, but 13 starts for their AAA affiliate. And he got his first major league win against the Dodgers. He is ranked as the second best prospect in the Brewers organization by Baseball America. Here's Philip Urban with a runner at second. The inning started with a double. But then Lorenzen struck out. Hamilton strikes out. Urban is two for three with an RBI. The pride of Samford University. Backers to the mound, and that's all. Reds still lead by two. <laughs> Reds Weekly presented by Miami Valley Gaming with a new episode tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports Ohio, streaming on Fox Sports Go. Lorenzen came in to hit, and now he will stay in to pitch. Of the seven runs allowed by Junior Guerra, only two of those were earned runs. Sal Romano goes five innings here tonight, allows seven base hits, five runs, all earned. Four of the five he gave up in the first inning, and four of the seven hits he gave up in the first inning. He struck out five, walked two, one intentionally. Hung in there and finished on a real bright note. If the bullpen can do its job, it will. That W will go to Romano. We got a long way to go. We are only in the bottom of the sixth inning. And to lead things off, it is Eric Kratz who's hit the ball very hard. One got through a single in the left field. The other was a diving catch made by Suarez. Uh, maybe they ought to try a different part of the strike zone here with Kratz up there. We know what he can do when he gets the ball thigh high middle in. Just drop a slider on him and he broke his bat. Probably go right back out there again. 
Kratz once traded straight up for Dan Straley. Of course, it was Straley that the Reds were able to turn into Luis Castillo and Austin Bryce. That was a very good deal made by the Reds. Very, very good deal. I don't think we're finished hearing from Austin Bryce in history. Oh, I think you're right about that. It's interesting when when Kratz and Straley were traded for each other, they were both eventually released by the teams that received them. What's well, a nasty pitch right there by Lorenzo? A lot of movement. Here's Arcia who also has hit the ball very hard twice a two run single and a right field in the first inning and a line drive into left field in the third for a base hit Bale and whale right here watch that front foot. You know. I'm not going to claim that anybody. There are some obviously that are better than others but no one is perfect or has a perfect record when it comes to evaluating players and evaluating talent. But I got to tell you when 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 you see a guy at the plate who is bailing out on every swing mm -hmm. I ask myself who ranks a guy that does that as a number one prospect in an organization because at the big league level. They are proving they can get this guy out by doing that all the time. He's batting 200. How in the world would anybody rate? And I'm not taking anything away from this kid. He's a marvelous athlete. He's still very young. Maybe he'll turn out to be a great player. But how are you the number one prospect when you're bailing on every swing? I think a better question for me, Tom, is how low does he have? Does his production have to fall? before he finally decides to do what his coaches are trying to get him to do because believe me I can guarantee you that the Milwaukee Brewer hitting coaches are not in, in, endorsing that particular oh, sure approach at the plate but you hit a few home runs you get used to it there's too cold and I mean it's got to kill him to watch RC up there but he's so good on defense that you're not going to sit him yeah. And one of these days the light will probably come on and he'll probably end up you know putting the ball in play a little bit more getting on base a little bit more and becoming a much better overall player. Oh no Cole's one of our favorite guys in the game. What a good guy. Played for the Reds for one year in 1992. In fact he had his best major league season with the Reds that year at least from a batting average standpoint he hit 312 for him in limited playing time. What a great guy. Swinging a foul ball out of play. You know, you, you look at Arcia last year, and at just 22 years old. Now, again, in fairness to this young man, he hit 15 home runs, he knocked in 53, and he hit almost 280. But the year before that, when they brought him up, he hit 219. And he's back around 219 this year. Two balls and two strikes on Ryan Braun. It's his first good bat of the game since coming on defensively.
So the inning continues. We go back to the top of the order in Christian Yelich. Yelich in a game tonight, one of three, singled in the first inning, scored the first run. He has since struck out and flied out to left. Seven runs, ten hits for the Red Legs. Five runs, eight hits, two big errors for Milwaukee. Each team has left four on base. One ball and one strike on Yelich. Club his 20th home run of this season here last night. He hit it a long way the other way. They let the runner just take off and steal second base. That's where Braun gets so many of his stolen bases by just watching the pitcher carefully and then seeing that he goes to sleep on him. I mean, that's really just a cursory look there by Lorenz and over his shoulder. When you look over your shoulder like that as a right-handed pitcher, most of the time you can't even see the runner. Two on Yelich. See the left hander Cody Reed beginning to throw in the Reds bullpen to sort of get loose. Well, Lorenzen got ahead of Yelich at one and two, and now the count goes full. Single and a walk. And here's Lorenzo Cain. Cain is one of two. He's walked and scored a run and behind strike one. Thing you notice about Kane, you just watch him even in two games of this series, and obviously we've seen him a lot more now. This guy likes playing the game. He has fun out there playing the game. Smiles a lot, talks a lot. Played for the Royals and played in a couple of World Series, winning one, of course. And a big pickup along with Yelich during the offseason. Been a good player for a long time. Handled by Herrera. And a throw is in time, and that will end the inning. Two left. We go to the seventh. Reds lead by two. Lou Pinella, just a little bit angry. Look on the face, priceless. The throw of the first base bag, priceless. And once was not enough. How about a double dip on that? Lou Pinella, sweet Lou. Boys beloved still in Reds country and fiery temper is part of what they liked. I was doing that game, they were playing the Cubs, and on that second throw, 
when he held the metal part of the bag and threw it right handed he sliced his finger wide open on that. Game. That was unbelievable watching it. you don't see that anymore. Because now we have replay and yeah. guys just don't know although Craig Council got run the other day and that was a pretty good. One. They were playing he got thrown out in the first inning. Maybe it's somewhere to go. Hey B. Celebrating his birthday here today his family was nice enough to pop up and say hello in between innings here his wife Michelle and their four kids. Really really nice family. He was very surprised today when he got to the ballpark. We mentioned earlier today is his birthday, and his wife and the two daughters, they also have two sons, but the two daughters came down here very early this morning and made a bunch of pictures, put them all over his office, had balloons and all kinds of cool stuff to celebrate his birthday when he came to work today. Very nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Strike three to Scooter Jeanette to lead off the seventh inning. Double and even a triple take. Shake it ahead. First time we've seen this guy. He, uh, I know it's only three batters, but he throws the ball pretty well. He throws it well, and he also has got a pretty good idea where it's going. Nice, repeatable delivery. Balls and no strikes on Eugenio Suarez. 0 for 3 in the game. Struck out twice and sandwiched in between. A line drive that was caught by Kane in center field to end the third inning. Reds with a two run lead more in the seventh. Ball four. Suarez, a one out base runner here in the seventh inning. Follow Fox Sports Ohio on Twitter. At Fox Sports OH on Twitter. Jason Williams is one for three at a double in the white center field in the fourth inning. Scored a run. Burns on in relief of Junior Garo gave up seven runs, only two were earned. Big error by then the right fielder Thames in the third inning, and a huge error by Moustakis. In the four run fourth inning. After watching that replay on that throw down to third when Brandon Dixon was a base runner from the catcher, Eric Kratz. You know, you watch that replay again, and, and I I certainly could see how Mustakas dropped that ball. Mm -hmm. The runner came right in and actually crossed his field of vision from where the ball was coming. And then as the base runner passed through and he lost sight of it momentarily and all of a sudden it was just on him like that. So perhaps he should not have been he wasn't but. I had said maybe he could have had a second error in the inning that wouldn't have been right. And that's the one area where runners are allowed to cross into the throwing lane. As he goes back to the base right there Dixon does exactly what you're taught to do which is you take a lead in foul territory. And then when a catcher throws down, you go back in fair territory, trying to cut off the throwing lane. Uh oh, this will be a 
Double play ball to Indiana. All right. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Reds with a two-run lead. Concert features Dove Award-winning band 10th Avenue North. Live concert from the field after the Reds take on the Padres. Tickets are available for as low as $12. Visit Reds.com today. Should be a great show. 10th Avenue North, September 8th. It's a 410 start concert after the game. And the Reds, how about this? Rather than giving the ball to Amir Garrett, this has generally been his role all year long. The Reds are going to give the ball in a two-run game to Cody Reed. I like it. You know, they've been talking about Cody Reed possibly being a starter. We talked a little bit about this last night, Tom, and it seems like every time it comes to the big leagues, though, they're using him out of the bullpen. I mean, for Cody Reed, it all centers around being able to control that breaking pitch. He just looks so much more relaxed this time through. Strikes on Moustakis. Now it might only be one batter for Reed. You have Aguilar and then Shaw. And is that uh, David Hernandez? Yes, warming up in the bullpen. And they're going to get him out. That's good work by Cody Reed. Let's see what Jim Riggleman decides to do. I mean, you got a two run game here. I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed with Reed here. After retiring that first batter. Now, if the first batter got on, you can pretty much take it to the bank. Hernandez is coming in. Well, the way they've got the lineup here with the Brewers is lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, you know, righty all the way down the line there. So, you know, they don't sandwich all the left handers together for particularly this reason. So he's going to give him at least one more batter here. Why not? Well, if he gets this guy, he's going to get the next guy. Yeah. Of course, they pinch hit for Shaw last night. They had uh, Aaron mm -hmm. Perez hit for Shaw because his numbers have been so poor against left-handed pitching this year. We showed you of Shaw's 25 home runs. What was it? One of them came against a left-hander and a batting average in the very low 200s. It's in the air to right center field and that will be flagged down short of the track by Williams so a long fly ball and out and now Reed trying to go through the Brewers in order as Shaw will back with two outs and nobody on Last night to be a little bit more specific. Shaw is batting 2 16 against left handed pitching with one home run and 11 runs batted in, only three doubles. Is he going to have a play on this one? Uh-uh. One ball and two strikes. Pulled foul. Jonathan Scope has moved into the on-deck circle. That's a pitcher spot next burn.
Cody Reed waiting on Mason Williams. He tried to throw the ball to a fan. The fan dropped it. It came back on the field again. And then he had to go get the ball and throw it in the stands again. Ooh. Tough pitch to hang off there. Come right back with it. First base line foul. Now that would not be a good spot to pitch Shaw. Now that's very think. close to the spot where he hit the home run yeah. off of Homer Bailey last night. I mean, your safety zone right here is down and away. Got him swinging on a high fastball at 95. What an impressive inning for Cody Reed. Cody Reed doing it. All right, fellas, look forward to catching up with you here soon. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Reds, seven runs, ten hits, four left on base. Brewers, five runs, eight hits, two big errors, and six left. Of the Reds, seven runs, only two of them were earned runs against the starter, Junior Guerra, but runs nonetheless. Burns beginning his second inning of work. He came on to get the final two outs in the sixth inning behind Guerra. And there's a weak tapper down to third by Barnhart. One out. Get over 9,100 below MSRP on this specially equipped Sierra 1500 Denali. Here's Dielson Herrera. He doubled and scored in the third inning. Struck out looking in the fourth. Struck out swinging in the fifth. Herrera showing fun. That's strike one. No, they said he didn't offer at it. I beg your pardon. Ball one. So Herrera, this will be his 48th plate appearance. He has eight hits. And three of the eight are home runs. Straight away center field, hit a ton. Back to the wall is Kane, and in front of the wall makes a catch. Herrera gave it a ride. Two out. Well, that sounded really good. It looked like that. That Burns wanted to come back into that same spot down and in where they struck out Herrera in the fifth inning, but he got a little bit of the plate right here. And sounded great coming off the bat. Boy, Kane is about as smooth as they come. Here's Brandon Dixon in their strike. Brandon one of three. Double the left field in the sixth inning. He scored a run, knocking in a run on a ground ball fielder's choice in the fourth. And that ball blistered into left center. See, I tell you, the last couple of nights, this guy has hit some balls really hard. He had a double in the game last night. He has two doubles in the game. He had a line drive out last night. He has two doubles in the game here tonight. Sometimes it takes a while to get your rhythm going you know when you're a bench player especially a young guy you're playing every day down the minor leagues and you're called up to the big leagues first thing you do is sit for 10 days well got a double and a single here tonight hit the ball hard last night as you said Tom and we'll get a chance probably the next few days to to play a little bit more until Joey Votto comes off the disabled list well you know uh, the Jim Riggleman uh, Shared with the media that you know we might see you know, Tucker Barnhart. I mean, uh, we've already seen him at first. Scooter Jeanette, I should say, get a little playing time at first until Votto comes back, which would give Herrera a chance, and you know maybe to look at him for four or five days in a row and move him over to second base, playing third tonight. We've seen him play some left field, but we haven't seen that yet. Preston Tucker up there to hit for the pitcher Cody Reed 
It works a one two three seventh inning. And Hernandez will get the ball when the Brewers bat in the bottom of the eight or so it appears. See by Sully Glacier starting to do some stretching and squatting down there to get set for what would be a ninth inning save appearance. We'll worry about that down the line. We're only in the eighth. And all of a sudden, Burns, who looks so impressive. Obviously, the scouting report on Preston Tucker, this guy can hit a fastball. Yeah, he's going to get one probably on a 3 0 count. I'd go ahead and give him the green light right here with two outs. Why not? <laughs> Took a fastball for a strike. Broken bat soft liner to first will end the inning. One left. Hernandez gets it in the eighth. Reds still lead by two. Cast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> Gotta go back to that shot. Red Legs take on the Padres Saturday, September the 8th. You can be there for 12 bucks, and thanks to Queen City Sausage, the first 20,000 fans get a Joe Morgan replica statue. It's the fifth anniversary of the Hall of Famers bronze statue dedication. Go to Reds.com. That was funny. That family trying to get that picture of the three kids and the little one in the middle wanted nothing to do with any of them. Isn't that the way it always works? You get two of them ready to go, smiling. Look at that one in the middle. <laughs> Dad trying to look for a good one. Now the other one's leaning back. <laughs> There's a drive way back by Scope. It's a one-run game. <laughs> the first is a brewer for Jonathan Scope. Uh, there were some boo birds out last night after he had a tough night at the plate and this is a little bit more of what they expected out of Jonathan Stoke when they picked him up at the trade deadline from the Baltimore Orioles. I mean he jumped all over a breaking ball down and in and went bye bye on that one. Peraza by the way comes in the game to play shortstop. Here's Kratz. That's a rare run indeed allowed by David Hernandez, who comes with an ERA in the ones. So we saw Jared Hughes give up a couple here last night. First time he's allowed runs since July. And now Hernandez. His last 32 appearances, his ERA going back to May the 20th is 1.50. The Reds are seven games over 500 in games that Hernandez pitches in, the 24 and 17. And most of those times he's holding the lead. Yeah, he's been steady Eddie really all year long. Got good command of his fastball, really good command of his breaking stuff, and just finishes his pitches. 
It was a heavy sinking fastball and just when he finishes that breaking ball it has an extra little snap at the very end. Rats will be followed by Arcia and then we'll see, and then Ryan Braun. Well that's good hitting right there by Kratz. Guys on fire tonight. Came in hitting 244. And he has hit three rockets in this game tonight. Two hits to show for it. I mean, that's a little, just a little wrist flip right there. We mentioned he's 6'4", 250. Been around a while. I think Kratz is something like 38 years old. Been on and off a of backup receiver in the major leagues for a long time. Wasn't he the guy one time years ago in Philly that beat a roll as Chapman with a home he run? He certainly did. Keon Broxton comes on to run and now Jim Riggleman's going to bring his entire infield around the pitcher's mat. What do you think it's all about? Yeah, we're talking about all the options right here for Arcia. Even though he's got a couple of hits on the night, a bunt is a very big possibility there from Craig Council. I wouldn't think that he's much of a hit and run possibility the way he swings and misses. Now, we don't know if Arcia has been asked to bunt this year. We know he does not have a sacrifice. Doesn't mean he can't bunt. Roxanne can run at first base, though. That we know. Found that one off strike one. And he didn't look comfortable trying he to sure did not. I mean, he just wants no part of getting that face in his close to the strike zone. Garcia had two sacrifices all of last year. Owen no! won the count. Runner goes. What a throw, and the ball is struck by Peraza. Holy Moses, you can't make a better throw than that. Well, uh, Barnhart really was right on the money with that, but I think the runner and the throw got there just about the same time, and that's what jarred the ball out of the way. I don't think, oh, yeah, it was just a drop, I'll tell you. He, before he even had contact, that ball came and hit the heel of the glove on Jose Peraza. I think he was looking at Broxon and one with one eye and the ball on the other and dropped it. That's too bad. That ball, I think part of it not only hit the heel of the glove, I think there's a part of it actually hit him in the wrist. Yeah, that's one of those, you know, if you're keeping stats on catchers and you see how many you've thrown out, what your throw sure. out percentage is, I mean, that's how that stat can be so skewed. Throw it out. Balls in a strike to Arce, who's already squared around a bun again. Well, you see what Hernandez is trying to do. He's trying to hit that outside corner and make Arcia reach for that ball. He doesn't like to get out there on the outer part of the plate. But he's got to throw a strike here on a 3-1 count. Ryan Braun on deck. I think Iglesias is ready to go, and I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Riggleman brought him in.
let him swing three and one. And he had no chance to hit that pitch. Now, he can't hit the outside corner pitch, much less one that is four inches out off the plate. And it would be an accident if he hit the ball off the end of the bat to advance a runner. I'm not even sure his back can cover that part of the plate. And he can cover a lot of plate. He's a big, tall kid. Snaps that bat in half after a swing and a miss, failing to try and get down a butt, and then striking out. Well, the Reds just take advantage of what RC has given them. Which is the outer half of the plate. Chase two pitches that were out of the strike zone. Ball four and ball five. It's going to be all for Hernandez. He goes a third of an inning, allows a couple of hits, a strikeout, and a home run. And Iglesias will come on here in the eighth. Reds in front by a run, tying run at second. Back in a moment. Toyota.com, Toyota, let's go places. By Geico, 15 minutes to save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Ram, it's a no comparison event at your Ram dealer. Don't miss the great deals on Ram today. All right, high drama last to the eighth. One run in. Reds lead 7 6. And now to try and get the final five outs and, and hold this one run lead is Rysel. Uh, the ace in the hole for Jim Riggleman. Nowhere else to go behind this guy. Strike one to Ryan Braun. He didn't think so. Good looking pitch. Two. Either Braun is not picking the ball up out of Iglesias' hand or he's basically guessing and he's got two guesses wrong. You're familiar with that. Two on Braun. And that one really is smoked in the left center. Brewers are going to tie the game. And now have the go ahead run at second with nobody out. I don't know. Did, did Ryan Braun will Bryselli Gracious to throw an 0 2 pitch basically right down the middle? Both of the runs are charged to David Hernandez. So he gave up a home run and a single. Boy, is that disappointing to see. Normally, these are the kinds of games that when the Reds do have leads, they have been so good in shutting the door with the group that we've seen tonight. Lorenzen, Hernandez, Iglesias, Jared Hughes. You know, you, you, you work so hard, you throw two beautiful pitches to get ahead 0-2, and, and then it all dissolves away by not missing in a safe spot. And now Yelich lines one to left. What a catch by Irvin out there. That ball hammered by Yelich. Boy, wow. He hit the ball hard the other way. I mean, to tell you, Iglesias has come in and served up two misses. Double by. Braun and now a line out by Yelich, and here comes Lorenzo Cain. But this guy wanted to drop a bunt at the third baseline. He could throw the first base right now. Probably not going to do it with a go ahead run out there at second, already one out in the inning. But the Reds infield is way back. Who 
Brewers know they have a chance to gain more ground on Chicago. The Cubbies losing today, two to one, fifth straight game. The Cubs have scored exactly one run, and they've won two of them. Drop down to get ahead on Kane. 0 oh 2. Contact this time. But it remains 0 and 2. Same way. He feels like Iglesias got away with one. Iglesias feels like he got away with one. Sweeps away from Kane. One ball, two strikes. Each team with seven runs. Each team with 11 base hits. And the Reds extremely fortunate for those two errors charged to the Brewers tonight, leading to five unearned runs. So yeah, the Brewers blew a four-nothing lead. They blew a five-to-three lead, and now the Reds have blown a two-run lead. Brewer scoring for the first time since the third inning. It's quite a battle here. Two and two, Iglesias v. Kane. Side. The damage done. Brewers tied up. We go to the ninth. Hits a couple of walks against Sal Romano. Reds would come back and get three runs in the third inning. Taking advantage of the Really an error and a lot of misplays and in the fourth another huge error made by Moskakis opening the floodgates for the Reds scoring four to take a seven to five lead. It was a bizarre inning. I mean it had a little bit of everything. And then Hernandez gives up a home run leading off the eighth. He gives up a single a stolen base where Peraza had the ball hit him on the wrist instead of catching the ball the runner would have been out going to second base and that runner wound up scoring on a base hit from Ryan Braun against Rysel Iglesias so Keon Broxton was that base dealer and he'll stay in the game Taylor Williams takes over on the mound as Yelich has gone in this game from left field to right field, now back to left field with Broxton taking over in right. Lined in the left by Hamilton, one out. 
Philly, two of four tonight. One of the rare nights the Reds have not had a bullpen nailed down a lead when they've had leads. Takes on the outside corner, one and two. Now they're naturally going to stay away from Irvin right here. His mostly, most of his power is to left field and left center field. Williams, 27 years old, made his major league debut against the Reds last year in September. Came out of Kent State. I love that. 97 up around the noggin. And that's a quick 97, too. Yeah. He's got a very fast arm. Boy, if you've ever seen a, a pitch that sets up a slider that's better than this one, let me know. It'll take every bit of gumption that Irvin can muster right here to stay in there with this one. And the check swing. Roller to the second base. <laughs> Two out. I'll tell you what, the two little relievers that they have brought in here tonight, Burns and now Williams, they're pretty impressive young pitchers. And that'll be all for Williams. He faces two, and that'll be it. All right, so he did a good job. And we'll tell you about the new pitcher when we come back. We're the ninth 7 7 game. The council will bring on a left hander from his bullpen, and that's Dan Jennings. He's been a busy man. Been around a long time, Dan, Dan Jennings. Has. This is game number 370 in his major league career. 31 years old, broke in with the Marlins, was up with the White Sox and Toronto briefly. Most recently with Tampa Bay last year, but he has been out there a whole bunch this year. 60th game. And he's worked 58 innings, so he's pitching about an inning each time out. Almost. Good observation. Now I'll tell you, math skills are improving a lot. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Scooter! Scooter! Did Scooter do it? Did he do it? He did it! Holy mackerel! Scooter Jeanette gives the Reds an 8 to 7 lead on the first pitch thrown by Jennings. Oh, brother! How sweet it is. Boy, how sweet does that feel for him coming back here? Well, he was a fan favorite here. There are a lot of people that really like Scooter Jeanette. And they like to have him back. It's just a little bit too late. First pitch breaking ball. And he just dropped the hammer. Boy, Craig Council. Suarez coming up. He's making another pitching change. Scooter Jeanette, number 19. Breaking a 7-7 tie in the ninth. How about that? Jennings in the game. Check out Scooter. This little boy wants to take a picture with him, right? Tapping him on the shoulder. Scooter's getting ready to go to the plate. 
He says, come on, take a picture of me, Scooter. Gives her a thumbs up. How sweet is that? Then he hit the ball. <laughs> he might bring that kid to Cincinnati. Why not? Give him and, a and, and, and that kid just got grounded by his dad. That's all right. We can use another fan. Yeah, but he can't play Fortnite for the next month. Corey Knable, who's been their closer the last couple of years, has been hurt. Spent a lot of time on the DL this season. Trying to get the final out here in the Reds. Ninth inning. See the numbers on Knable. He's trying to get back into a groove here. And there's a base hit into right field. Second time he's been on base, first hit tonight. And now it's Mason Williams. Able ahead of Williams at 0 2. Scooter Jeanette. First pitch thrown by the left hander Jennings. He launches to the seats and right to break his 7 7 time. This one popped up. Is he going to put a play on this one? Uh uh. Out of play. About 18 rows up. Joey's been following. It's almost like our uh, director, uh, the camera shots all night long. I mean, you always, it's like pitching coaches. When a guy pitches a great game, you go make sure you sit next to him every inning, right? Because you'll end up on TV. Joey's been on all night. That is fair a ball. fair ball up the line by Williams, and the runner was on the move and will easily score. Suarez rounding third, Williams on his way to third, and that is a run scoring triple to make it a 9 to 7 Cincinnati lead. First three base hit for Williams, and that is his fifth run batted in. It's a big run right there, gives you a little breathing room out. Iglesias in the bottom of the ninth. I'll tell you, Mason Williams has given the Reds a, a really some good professional at bats. He's very impressive in spring training and got everybody up and excited with that triple. Tucker Barnhart, the batter. 
Tucker one of three has been on base twice scored a run. For the last two relievers brought in by Council the home run given up by Jennings and Teneva comes in. He gives up a single to Suarez and a run scoring triple to Williams. I mean, you look at the Canable stuff and you wonder how he doesn't win most every at bat there is. Dialing it up to 98. He's got a wicked slider. What? Are you serious? Call strike. Council seething down there in that Milwaukee dugout. How about Scooter? Against his former team. Breaks a tie. Reds lead by two coming up to the bottom of the night. Game with Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Rooting. Roofing. I'm rooting. They're roofing. Iglesias with a two run lead, and there are the probables for tomorrow. Robert Stevenson against Freddie Peralta. And hopefully that'll be the rubber game of this three game set as the Reds have a two run lead here going to the bottom of the ninth. I get the sneaking suspicion that's a very important start tomorrow for Stevenson. I could be dead wrong about that, but his first two starts have not been good. Well, I would think that anytime you get a ball in the major leagues on the mound as a starting pitcher, it is an important yeah. start. Good point. All right, part of the order. Moustakis to be followed by Aguilar and then Shaw. And then you get any further than that, and you're going to hit for the pitcher. Straight up in the air, this will be out number one. So Iglesias goes from blowing a save. He's the one that allowed the tying double to Braun. To now having a chance to pick up the victory. And when leading at the end of eight innings, there is close to money in the bank as you can get. And that has a lot to do with that bullpen we talked about earlier. Now most of that obviously is Iglesias although he spent time on the disabled list this year Jared Hughes came in did a real nice job. There's a line drive and every time he drops down like that. At least it seems like lately. He's been hurt. So the tying run comes to the plate. in the year and out of play. Shaw hit a home run earlier in this game is 26 he's homered in each of the first two games of this series. Two balls and a strike.
Yeah, Manny Pena standing in the on-deck circle to bat for Knable if indeed they decide to use him. Uh -oh. Straight away center field, Hamilton will have room. Uh, thank goodness he picked the deepest part of the ballpark. So that ball was well hit, but it went way high into the air. And just about every Brewer faithful here went to their feet when they saw this baby come off the bat. I'm kind of glad his at bat is over. No question. Now, Pete. Enable faces three batters, gives up two hits and a run. A huge run, obviously. Down again there and found out a play by Pena. One ball and one strike. Say it's amazing how many decisions if indeed Jennings ends up being the losing pitcher in this game. For a left-handed reliever who averages less than an inning per outing, this would be his ninth decision. And that's all those one-run games we were talking about. Milwaukee's played in. Mm -hmm. Drops in there for strike two, so now and out away. Uh, you know what happens here sometimes when. Iglesias drops down. You mentioned it seems like every time he drops down, he gives up a hard hit ball. But, you know, sometimes when you drop down, you've got to concentrate even more about getting that ball outside to the hitter. You don't want to drop down and then leave it right on the inner part of the plate. Mm -hmm. you want another slider, and Iglesias wants a heater. And there's a base hit in the left field. So this one not quite over. It'll be Keon Broxton the batter. Broxton came on as a pinch runner. So this is his first at bat of the game. Iglesias just not as sharp as we've seen him here tonight. Gave up a big hit to Braun, which tied the game. He's given up a couple of base hits here in the ninth. And so on a night when perhaps he's pitching with less than his best, he's going to try and nail this down and get a win. One out to go, but a tying run at second, a winning run at first. Or the tying run at first, I beg your pardon. Swing and a miss to get ahead 0-2. Two. Well, two good breaking pitches right there. Got him swinging, and that's the old ball game. 
So the Reds win it by a final count of nine to seven thanks to the two out solo home run by Scooter Jeanette and naturally that will be our built for baseball brought to you by T-Mobile Moment. Scooter back in Milwaukee and breaking hearts with that home run. So there will be a rubber game to this series tomorrow. And we will be coming your way with Reds Live Manana at 1.30 in the afternoon. Game coverage begins at 2. Reds Live, the post-game show. It's coming up next. I'll bet you Jim Day's going to run down Scooter.